relationships-based approach to optimising patient care. According to the BMJ, numerous benefits may accrue from a trusting, confident doctor-patient relationship. These include the open communication of information between the doctor and the patient, with subsequent encouragement of the patient's enablement and improved adherence to medical advice, and the improvement of health outcomes and better patient perceptions of healthcare. One thing I'm sure we can all agree on is that the outcome for the patient is the most important thing. Don't agree? It may be time to turn off this recording and stop watching now. The door's over there, I'm sure. Allow me to introduce my model of how to get the best outcome for a patient. As you can see, there are three main elements of a great outcome. A great surgeon, a great therapist, and a great patient. And where those three overlap is the relationships between each of them. The sweet spot in the middle is where all parties are contributing optimally to the patient getting well. So that's where you have the best odds for a great result. And that's not just me talking, by the way, that's backed up by research. In fact, there's a BMJ paper from 2009 that explicitly states that patients' trust in their doctors, and by extension their therapists, is absolutely fundamental to an effective clinical encounter. And what I want to talk to you about today is how to build and influence the relationship between surgeon and therapist, because a good relationship there will significantly feed into and enhance the relationships and trust between surgeon, therapist and patient. Hello, my name is Nell Mead. I'm a physiotherapist. I was a physio in the British Army for 10 years, seeing 14 patients a day with a huge range of issues, from chronic back pain to sprained ankles, and from blast injuries to amputations. In 2010, I left the Army to set up Victory Health and Performance, with my vision being to bring the military standards of multidisciplinary care into the private sector. I've now got a team of 12, and since 2010, we've helped 1,800 patients get better. But lots of us talk about patient care, right? Well, I take it to a ridiculous level, and I always have. For example, one time when I was head of physio for British Forces Cyprus, I had a patient who was due to cook Christmas dinner for 14, and a couple of days before Christmas, her back went. She was completely convinced that she wouldn't be able to manage Christmas for her family, and she was super depressed about it. So I went in and treated her on Christmas morning. I mention it now, but at the time, I didn't tell anybody I was doing it. But she told all of her friends and family over Christmas lunch. It's one of my favourite Christmas memories, and apparently the lunch was awesome too. You see, that level of care is a huge part of what I've carried over to Victory, where we offer a range of different services so that we can get the patient the best possible outcome. We've got physiotherapy, which incorporates Diane Lee's amazing integrated systems model, with cranial and visceral work, alongside more traditional musculoskeletal therapy, sports rehabilitation, performance psychology, vestibular and balance therapy, soft tissue therapy, Pilates and core fitness and yoga. Um, we look at the whole person and we look at how their injured part integrates with the rest of their body rather than looking at painful areas in isolation. And we really, really care about our patients. In fact, our ethos of caring is what drove me to create the questions we use to decide which of our medical partners or allies, as we call them, we want to entrust with our patients. And today, I'm going to talk you through how we at Victory build the relationships with the doctors that we choose to refer to. I'm hoping that this will help you to think about using something similar to choose your therapy partners so that you can really optimise your surgeon therapist relationships going forward. The first thing I ask myself before I even contact your secretary to ask to meet you is, do I or am I likely to have patients who need what you offer? Now, in our case, because we're a multidisciplinary team and we work from a really holistic perspective, there are very few people I don't want to visit. But even if you're a super specialist surgeon who only ever operates on left little fingers, please don't imagine that you should only go and meet specialist hand physios. Because from a surgical perspective, your patient totally wants you to be a specialist and as joint specific as possible. But from a rehab perspective, that doesn't make sense. For example, I had a patient recently who was getting dorsal wrist impingement when he was doing his favourite sport of Olympic lifting. So he'd seen a hand physio before he saw me and she'd focused on wrist mobility and on strengthening his wrist flexors to help him really control his dorsiflexion. But what she hadn't realised was that he didn't have the range or control in his shoulder 
to be able to get right under the bar when he was um, going into a, a, a clean position, which was like this. And because his shoulder wasn't doing its job properly, his wrist was really taking the hit. I didn't touch his wrist, but I got his shoulder moving better and his wrist got much better pretty quickly by itself. Once I meet you as a surgeon, the next thing I look for is how you communicate with your patients. I'll ask to come into clinic with you and talk to you and watch you interacting with your patients. I'm looking for evidence that you can communicate with your patients on their level, whatever that level that is. Do you care? Are you interested in your patient and why their problem is so important to them? Do you treat the man, not the scam? And do you offer your patients clear options going forward? In the BMJ paper I mentioned, the biggest factor for doctors who want their patients to trust them is letting them know that you're taking their problems seriously. I also want to know that you're not too scalpel happy because we know that for most conditions, surgery is the last resort. So when you're asking your patients about any physiotherapy they've had, are you asking what their therapist has actually done? And are you able to evaluate whether that was adequate? Are you asking enough questions? Or is that little voice in your head just telling you to operate? For my part, I've lost count of the number of patients I've seen who have been told they need surgery, but who come to me just in case they can avoid it. And in many cases, we've been able to get them to the point where they're actually quite satisfied with their outcome without needing to go under the knife. Next, I want to know that you and I are able to communicate. I'll be asking you how long you've been practicing, how many patients you've seen, and what their outcomes tend to be. I'll also be asking who your favorite patients are, because I'm looking for surgeons who can define their ideal patient in a sentence or two. It makes you memorable. And so the next time I see a patient with a ruptured rotator cuff, I'll remember that rotator cuff repair is your favorite thing in the world. For example, I specialize in treating chronic and complex problems, the ones that other physios haven't been able to fix. And in my ideal world, I'm the first port of call rather than the last. If you can't define your ideal patient yet, it's definitely something to think about if you want physios to refer to you. And if you need help with defining them, I can point you towards one of my friends who's a medical business coach and she's a doctor as well. And she's absolutely brilliant at doing exactly that. So if you need help that in that direction, drop me a line and I'll put you in touch. The next thing I'm looking at is your clinical skills. I want to come and watch you operate. Out of interest, how many physios have been to watch you in theatre lately? It's something I do a lot. I try to go into theatre to watch surgeons I haven't yet referred to, and when one of my patients is on the table, I'll try and be there as well. That's because I want to know exactly what you did. I want to know how the operation went and what your post-op expectations are. The point of surgery for me is the point where you hand over the battle of patient care to the physio. And if the physio isn't there, I think that's a big opportunity lost. After all, as the therapist, I'm gonna be the one looking after the patient for the next few months. So the more I can explain exactly what you did, the more I can help them and the more they will trust my advice because they know I've seen your surgery and I, they know I've seen the inside of their body. I don't think theatre visits get emphasised enough because whenever I tell young therapists I do it, every time I'm surprised that they're surprised. This is a slight tangent, but on the flip side, when you meet therapists, I think you should definitely talk to us about our skills too. When you come to Victory, one of the big conversations we'll be having is about our health and performance pyramid. This is our pyramid and it um, underpins all the assessment and treatment that we do at Victory because we get the results that we get by looking at so much more than just the painful area. If our patients don't look after their sleep, stress, hydration and nutrition, then they're likely to have poor tissue health and they'll respond less well to physical treatment. So we focus on that as a starting point. And then we look at their alignment, their biomechanics, their control, their biopsychosocial needs, their neuromuscular proprioception, their movement pattern and their fitness to make sure that they have enough capacity in their systems to be able to do the things that they want their bodies to be able to do. If they have sports coaches or personal trainers or Pilates instructors outside Victory, we want to be building a relationship with those guys as well so that by the time our patients leave us, they're not just out of pain as far as possible, but they also really understand how to keep themselves injury proof for the long term. And that's why our assessments are 90 minutes long and our follow up sessions are almost always an hour. I don't believe a therapist can be seriously effective and build up a trusting relationship with much less time than that.
The other thing I'm looking for when I come and observe you in theatre is what your theatre team think of you. I'm not only watching you operate, I'm watching the interaction between you and your theatre staff. If they're clearly relaxed and they trust you, then I know I can too. The last thing is chemistry. I talked about successful treatment being about relationships. And when I'm referring a patient to you, I'm effectively taking on the role of matchmaker and I'm trusting you to look after my patient. It's like setting two really close friends up for a blind date. I want to feel that you and my patient are likely to be able to build a good relationship so that the three of us together can hit that sweet spot on the Venn diagram. So hopefully I've given you an idea of how seriously we at Victory take patient care. And I hope that by sharing the way that we choose our surgical allies gives you some ideas as to how to choose your therapy partners. Because just like surgeons aren't all the same and how much time do you spend fixing other surgeons' mistakes, physios aren't all the same either. To summarise, and going back to the BMJ, the best patient outcomes are based on trust. And trust is engendered by strong, positive relationships with all the stakeholders, surgeons, therapists, and patients. So if you really care about patients and their outcomes, please don't leave it to chance. Get to know the best therapists in your area and give your patients the optimal opportunity to make a great recovery. To get a copy of my checklist to stimulate some ideas, please email me at nell at victoryhealthandperformance.com. I'd also like to invite you to one of Victory's quarterly open evenings. With four treatment rooms and a rehab studio, we can fit up to 20 visitors at one time and we demonstrate what we have to offer. Email me for details of our next open evening. Thanks for your time. I look forward to seeing you in clinic.